Hi, I'm Russ Goldberger. I'm a dealer from New Hampshire. We're here at the Midwest Decoy Club's National Decoy Show in St. Charles, Illinois. Wanted to discuss today Mason Decoys. The Mason Decoy Company was based in Detroit, Michigan. It was in business about 100 years ago, from officially 1896 to 1924. They are the most prolific maker of duck decoys ever in this world by anybody, individual or company. So Russ, you told me previously that uh, the Mason factory uh, made hundreds of thousands of decoys, is that right? Best we can estimate, they made several hundred thousand decoys. The decoys were made out of wood, they came off a pattern lathe, but they were finished by hand, the heads were carved by hand, and the paint was put on by hand, and the paint is as good as any individual ever painted. It's hard to believe these were sold commercially for a dollar or less a piece. So Russ, people love Mason decoys. What is it in your opinion that attracts uh, folks to the Mason decoy? I think it's a couple things. I think one, they're very sensuous. They have a very pleasing look about them. And the paint is wonderful, as I said a moment ago. The other thing is they're readily available. So people are familiar with them. But most of the ones you find in your antique stores or at the shopping mall or wherever you're gonna find them have been repainted, restored, refinished, whatever. And the premium on duck decoy collecting is original condition, particularly with Mason decoys. So you have this tremendous amount of quantity and very few retain this kind of condition, this original condition. And so that puts a lot of pressure from the bottom up and uh, they're highly desirable. So did Mason only make one decoy or did they have different uh, styles? Mason made a tremendous variety of decoys. They had three different grades the premier grade, which is this grade here, that tend to be hollow, flat-bottomed, a little bit bigger, and they have this distinctive notch on the top of their bill. That's characteristic of a Mason decoy. They also, they also made a challenge grade decoy, such as this, which tends to be solid-bodied with a rounded base, and they have an, inc an incised line between the bill and the face, but no notch. And then they made a standard grade decoy like this one, which is much simpler. It's solid bodied, rounded, but no detail. Both paint and carving details, very simplified. These sold for about 50 cents a piece. So you mentioned the most valuable is a decoy in original paint. Yes. Uh, and so if I happened across uh, a Mason decoy and I was trying to determine whether I thought it had original paint or had been repainted, what are some uh, clues that I could look for? First thing I would do is I'd get familiar. I'd come to shows like this one, or I forgive the commercial for a moment, or I'd buy a book like this one. This costs sixty dollars and is available on my website, available on Amazon, etc. You become familiar with, with what they looked like originally. Once you feel like you have some sense of what a mason should look like, then use your eyes, use daylight, use your fingers. What do I mean by that? Mason didn't prime its decoys generally, so you can feel the wood grain coming through the paint. If it feels slick and smooth, it's either been repainted or at least varnished, and both of those are probably things to stay away from. Russ, you told me previously that uh, a, a distinguishing characteristic was the sweeping lines of the Mason paint. Can you talk more about that? Mason was making its decoys in the late 19th and early 20th century, and that was a period during the Victorian era when calligraphy was very popular. The lines on a Mason decoy tend to be very sensuous. They are not hard edged, they're very flowing and smooth and, and uh, just a very desirable line. And you'll come over time to become familiar with that and that is a characteristic of Mason decoys. And they probably did it better than most anybody else I can think of, in fact. So if someone uh, wanted to learn more about Mason decoys, you, you mentioned that there are some printed books available are there uh, websites or uh, online resources? There, there are some really good websites, and I, I don't want to blow my own horn, but our website, www.rjgantiques.com, is designed as a destination, destination website. 
there's many original resource materials there. There's a synopsis of our book with photographs. There are guides to collecting. There are guides to what you should purchase and what you should not purchase, at least in our opinion. And there are a lot of links to other websites and other commercial publications and other museums, et cetera, that might be very helpful to prospective collectors. So if, if folks had questions uh, regarding Mason decoys or other decoys, mm -hmm. because you deal with uh, uh, decoys other than Mason's, yes, they course. can reach you through your website? They can reach me through the website. Uh, the email address is russ at rjgantiques.com, and uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Terrific. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Thank you.